Chapter 24 Don't piss off Sephiroth. Sephiroth stared down in shocked horror at the silver head of hair currently latched onto his chest. He knew of the remnants of his soul that had been given life by Genova two years after Meteor, but he did not know that they were alive once more. Before he could even react to the one currently trying to imitate a leech on his chest he was glomped from behind, arms wrapping around him tightly squeezing both him and the leech in front. Liz, further still needs to breath. Sorry Yazoo. The voice-like grip around him loosened and a figure slowly moved out from behind him so that Sephiroth could see him. Two boys now stood beside him. He knew who they were even without actually knowing them. Liz, Yazoo. He said softly and looked down to the wannabe leech on his chest. And you must be Kadaj. Brilliant acid green eyes looked up at him, the boy was much shorter than he was probably about the same height as Cloud. At this point in time he really looked like the boy attached to him as their hairstyles were nearly identical. Yazu, why did you call brother father? Les asked, Kadaj surprisingly had been quiet but hadn't released Sephiroth. He is the reason we exist, we share his cells. Is that not what father and son are? Seph? Genesis moved up to them. He had been sent on a Honijuk's run since Sephiroth was now banned from the store. Yeah, that wasn't a pretty story from the last Hogsmeade trip. He has a growth, yo. Reno chuckled but was making sure to stay away from the prettiest of the remnants as that was the one that had royally kicked his ass the last time they met. Seeing this Yazoo smiled tilting his head to the side much as Sephiroth did when he was curious about something. Are you afraid of me Turk? Not on your life yo. But that didn't mean he was going to move from Rufus' side. Yazoo actually giggled and moved over to Sephiroth though his eyes were looking at General I'm still trying to figure it out General. This one. He motioned with his finger to the leech. Attached himself to me and hasn't let me go. Are these? Are these your remnants? Genesis asked his eyes sweeping over the three that looked so much like Sephiroth. We're not remnants anymore. Kadaj finally spoke up still clinging to his father, brother he didn't know what to call him. We no longer share his soul, simply his cells. What are you three doing here? The goddess didn't inform us that you had been reborn. Hello Director Lazard. Genesis noticed the man for the first time, he was surprised dot dot but not completely to see him. He knew from his time speaking with Angela and Zack during their time in the live stream that Lazard and Rufus had finally bonded as brother. Yeah they weren't exactly going to leap into each other's arms and ball, but close enough they weren't going to kill each other. We came back to watch over dad dot dot brother dot dot mother dot dot she's alive still and she wants her favorite son. You believe them Albus? Minerva, Severus, Phileas and Pomona all sat around Albus' office once more. Umbridge was down in the town watching over the children down in Hogsmeade so this gave them the opportunity to speak in privet without the ministry prying. Dumbledore had been forced to play interference once already when it came to young Mr. Zarbini. No Mr. Akira. It was pretty obvious the few times he had seen the boy sneaking in late at night from the forest or a hidden classroom covered in bite marks what he was doing. Umbridge had caught him once coming back in from the forest, that had led to a seven-hour interrogation for which the boy had actually ended up interrogating her. He had laughed hard when he heard that and seeing the smug little smile on Zeng's face as he left. Cloud had informed him of exactly what the Turks did and that Tseng being the director was the best of the best. It honestly didn't surprise him after learning that that Tseng had gone through and made Umbridge spill instead of vice versa. I do Minerva, since Mr. Strife's and I's talk I have done much more extensive research, books that are as dated as they can be. The books that I have are only able to be obtained by the most powerful wizards in the world. You know as well as I do that the Cairo Library of Ancient Magic only loan these books out to those of great power and wisdom. Now I would have simply believed that the boy was powerful and obtained this book as well. But opening the book to a pre marked place, it was a copy of a newspaper from over 9,000 years ago. 
It was a non-moving picture of several people all in different style clothes, and there at the very front in the same outfit and the same sword was Cloud Strife. This picture was taken over 9,000 years ago. It was found in an ancient newspaper buried on the coastline of Egypt. It was pretty destroyed but they were able to restore it, but that isn't all. He flipped the pages to a picture that was taken from a propaganda paper from the height of Shinra. Standing in front of a giant painted Shinra sign was Angel, Sephiroth and Genesis in full battle regalia. That's the symbol that was painted on the Daily Prophet building. Pomona said looking over the picture. It's Neville dot dot and. Is that Harry? The group all looked closer at the picture, sure enough it was the two boys there was no mistaking it even though Harry's hair was much shorter now than in this picture. The Holy Trinity is what they were called during their height. General Sephiroth Valentine, Commander Genesis Rhapsodos and Commander Angel Huli Albus sat back allowing Minerva to pull the book forward more and started to leaf through it. They were the three highest ranking and the most powerful soldier which were specially enhanced elite of the Shinra military. All three were specially engineered from birth to be what they are, the glow in their eyes the acidic blood is a chemical substance that is used to enhance them to superhuman strength and agility. Is that the same as Fred? Minerva asked, Albus nodded laying down a photograph Cloud had left with him. It was the one where he was much younger and still a student of Angel's. That is why you see them separated even though the group is all reincarnates, two separate actually rival groups. He chuckled softly remember Cloud telling him of the prank war that had happened between the group, at least what he had heard from Genesis. The warning on Umbridge's wall was put up by the group called the Turks. The other group. They are far more dangerous than our group of soldier. Dangerous how? Minerva asked swallowing slightly her dark eyes looking up from the book to Albus, several of those children were in her house. Turks according to Mr. Strife are trained professional assassins, masters of stealth, interrogation and torture. They have no rules and they play by no one else rules, if they feel that their small family is in danger they will even turn on their boss. The group all swallowed hard, Severus especially as he had made several of these boys his target over the years. What do we do Albus? Nothing, to make these children our enemy could very well be the last thing we ever do. Walking back into the school the four newcomers couldn't help but stare in awe, Hogwarts was truly a beautiful castle, a little on the strange side but beautiful. Hey what's going on? Les asked seeing a massive group of students gathered around the exterior entrance courtyard. I don't know, Sephiroth moved through the students coming to stand on the border his hands resting against a stone pillar gently. His eyes widened slightly as he saw Trelawney standing out all by herself in the center of the courtyard, two trunks at her feet and the most pitiful expression on her face. In front of her with the smuggest smirk on her face was none other than the foul pink toad. God Cloud should have cursed her for eternity with that form. The others moved up around him Angel beside him growled low, don't tell me they are kicking her out. That's what it looks like you. Rena voiced lowly his eyes darkening. None of them held any love for the foul toad. I'm not the biggest fan of Trelawney, but at least she is a kind woman. Speak for yourself, she didn't predict your death every few weeks since third year. But Sephiroth had to agree. He knew why she was being kicked out. To be kicked from Hogwarts left you open to the ministry. Further who is that? Liz was standing next to the man they had all agreed to simply call father. It was easier just to give in to Kadaj than argue with him and Yazu seemed to agree with the littlest boy. Unnerved the hell out of Sephiroth being called father, though Genesis was as happy as a clam about the whole thing. Professor Umbridge, she is the Ministry appointed defense against the Dark Arts teacher. More like the Ministry's bid for control of the school, and it's working. Why don't you just kill her dad? Kadaj was already playing with his precious sober itching to decapitate her. Sephiroth set a hand down on his youngest remnant's shoulder, the little one had attached himself to him. Because little one, this is a second chance. 
No meaningless slaughter. Though Sapphiroth glared darkly at Humbridge, I might make an acceptation. Please. Hogwarts is my home. I have nowhere else to go. Trelawney sobbed, tears running down from her gigantic bug like eyes. I'm sorry, dear, but. Dot dot as per the ministry. Fuck the ministry. Sapphiroth stared slack jawed along with everyone else as Angel moved out into the courtyard and came to stand next to the shaking woman and wrapped his hands around her shoulders, gently, simply offering up comfort. The ministry lacks honor if they are willing to throw a woman out into the streets. The ministry is run by a paranoid old fool that lacks dreams and honor, he simply wants power and is willing to slander the good names of children in order to achieve that. And you. You prance around here like you own the damn place. Almost Mr. Longbottom, Umbridge gave him a sickeningly sweet smile. Now I suggest you move before. Before what professor you expel me? Send me to the torture dungeons, or make me write lines with a blood quill? You play God among the school grounds and with people's lives. Soon enough you will find out what monsters you are messing with, and trust me. Those monsters don't take well to being ordered round. Is that a threat Mr. Longbottom? It's a warning. Sapphiroth moved up the long crimson leather coat he had stolen from his lover fluttering around his feet as he moved. One I suggest you heed Professor, a war is coming. And you are on the losing side. He stopped directly in front of Angel keeping his body between the toad and them. He was really starting to grow sick of this woman. Umbridge's eyes seemed to dance as she looked at Sephiroth, almost like Christmas had come early. Is this in reference to a certain Dark Lord being back Mr. Potter? He voice was sickly sweet once more and it grated on his nerves. No. While Voldemort is playing a part, he is just a pawn in a much larger game. A game that has been going on for thousands of years. You sit here, in your horrid pink office playing God over a bunch of underage children, tell me Umbridge does that make you feel superior, knowing you can rule over a bunch of children? I bet if a real threat was in front of you you would cower down like the toad you are same as well as the ministry, as long as Fudge can remain in his paranoid dream of power you will lord over whatever you can. The rage building in Umbridge's eyes was unmistakable, she was furious, probably because Sephiroth was hitting the nail right on the head every time. Angel, take her back to the castle. Knowing better than to argue with his general Angel nodded gently pulling the stuttering professor away. Trelawney reached out gently grasping Sephiroth's hand, thank you. Thank you. Zack raced out and grabbed the trunks pulling them back in with the help of Rude. Seth. What are you doing? Tseng was once more in Cloud's shirt. He was standing at the front of the group which was now accompanied by teachers and now the headmaster. Sapphiroth ignored them his sole attention was on the toad in front of him. Mr. Potter I thought you were taught not to tell lies, the ministry. Is full of a bunch of retarded paranoid sociopaths with their heads shoved so far up their ass they need to unbutton the middle of their shirt just to see. The ministry is a joke, always has been and you being here is the biggest joke of all. You sit here and deny the truth. Make up laws that prevent students from learning magic all because your dear lovely minister is so damn paranoid we. A bunch of kids are going to rise up against him and take over the ministry. The magical community is now under the rule of a dictatorship, and I can tell you right now Umbridge. The magical force that is coming our way is nothing you have ever dealt with before. And you will lose. So I suggest if you want to keep that miserable existence you call a life. You back the fuck off from us. Seth is pissed you. Reno was shocked normally Sapphiroth became deadly quiet when he was upset. No. That's Harry coming through. Even though Sapphiroth himself was fully in control Harry's personality still shone through, just as all of theirs did. Umbridge was pissed and it showed on her face. She tried to hide it with her sweet smile but it kept faltering. She slowly pulled her wand out and leveled it at Harry, the teachers moved to intercept but were stopped by the reincarnates. Don't. Sapphiroth can handle this. Tseng said looking up at Dumbledore. 
Seeing it there was the Turk director that stopped him Albus nodded slightly knowing it was best to trust this man. What are you going to do Umbridge? Attack me for speaking my mind against you. Oh yeah this was definitely Harry coming through, Sapphiroth would have just beheaded her already. I am going to take care of this lying once and for all Mr. Potter. Sapphiroth's eyes began to glint and that old insanity coming through once more that small sadistic smile lighting his face. He looks just like he did at Niblime. Zack whispered fear starting to creep into his voice. Niblime? Severus asked, the memory of the town burning he had seen in Harry's memories surfacing once more. Yeah. The town he burned to the ground in a fit of insanity. It was wonderful. Do it dad. Kadad shouted out ignoring the horrified looks from the professors. The remnants. Don't mind them. Reno said turning just in time to see Sephiroth produce a brilliant red material from his pocket. Is that? It's a summon. Tseng felt his blood run cold, while Sephiroth could control all summons is somewhat easily too large to fit in this small courtyard. A summon? He's going to call forth a summon? Albus was both horrified and intrigued. Never in his wildest dreams did he ever think he would see a summons. You wish to silence me Umbridge? Well. Let's see who has the bigger guns then shall we? The material flared to life the summon circle appearing around his body. The sky around them began to darken, the clouds twisting as a similar summoning circle appeared in the sky only two seconds later shatter as a massive black dragon slammed into the courtyard behind Sephiroth. It stood with massive wings of brilliant red slash gold slash and purples. A giant gold divine seal floated above its back. It let out a mighty roar and stood large arms crossing over his chest like a massive black bodyguard. Students screamed and backed off but soon pulled back staring at or at the massive creature. The teachers all had their wands drawn but were also staring up at it in awe. That's a new Bahamut. Angel whispered it truly was a beautiful summon, Bahamut Divine. Genesis discovered that summon about 4,000 years ago. Cloud was telling me about it. Tseng was just as much in awe, mainly caused the fact Genesis had give that summon up. Snorting Reno smacked his partner, give him sunglasses and you two could be twins. Rolling his eyes Rude smacked Reno on the back of the head. Umbridge had fallen onto her ass trembling wand held up in front of her. What? What the hell is that thing? Laughing darkly Sephiroth moved up to her his steps slow and calculating. This is one of the many powers you know nothing about. One of the many that are coming dot dot now. He knelt down and leaned over her his long silver hair creating a curtain around them, he could feel Bohammed move to stand above him and become the protector he was meant to be if need be. Final warning. I'm glad you enjoyed that video slash gameplay. Just remember to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below. Until next time, goodbye!